It's a good thing she lights up a room. The queen laughs off a power cut during afternoon tea with Y members at a village hall. Despite having to tuck into tea and cake in total darkness, the queen was smiling and laughing as she had a cup of tea with the Sandringham branch of the Women's Institute in the dark today, after the storm left the village hall with no power. Her Majesty continued her annual visit to the Y branch at West Newton Village Hall in Norfolk, despite the power cut, which meant there was no heating with lighting. The Queen, dressed in a pink coat, joked that she was struggling to see the Y members in the dark village hall, whilst some of the women used their iPhone torches to light up the room. The ladies all enjoyed cake and tea, despite the freezing temperatures in the village hall, whilst they listened to a speech by guest speaker. BBC reporter, Susie Fowler Watt. The Queen later managed to sign the visitor's book in the dark as the Y member struggled to pack up the cakes by torchlight. Yvonne Brown, chairwoman of the Sandringham branch of the Women's Institute, said, You could say it has been very interesting. This morning the power went off at 06.11am and all through the morning we had information it would be on in an hour, so I took the decision we would go ahead regardless. I had calls with the House and the Queen's private secretary said yes if we were happy to go ahead, then they were happy to go ahead. So Her Majesty valiantly came along to the Y this afternoon with no heating and no lighting and we were supplied with urns of water by the police to make the tea so we were actually able to provide everyone with a cup of tea. The Queen came in and she was laughing and smiling with everybody and making remarks on the fact she couldn't really see us because it was even darker in the hall than it was outside. We've had a really lovely afternoon despite no heat or light. The Queen has attended the Y Group's meetings since 1943 and took over as president from the Queen Mother, who in turn took over from Queen Mary. The local school was closed at lunchtime because there was no electricity. Each year she visits the Y branch at West Newton Village Hall in Norfolk and this time she was joined by guest speaker, BBC reporter, Susie Fowler Watt. The Queen has attended the Y Group's meetings since 1943 and took over as president from the Queen Mother, who in turn took over from Queen Mary. In 1965, to celebrate the Y Golden Jubilee, there was a garden party at Buckingham Palace by gracious invitation of the Queen for a member from every Y in the country. While the Queen enjoyed a day in Norfolk, royal bride-to-be Meghan Markle and Prince Harry arrived in the Welsh capital to a tumultuous welcome from fans, but delays to the GWR train meant they arrived at the Welsh capital late for their third public engagement as a couple. Besotted Harry, 33, has made a promise to his bride-to-be to undertake visits across the U.K. before their wedding, to give the actress a chance to see the country she will come to call home and meet its people. Viewers recently praised the Queen's reaction after she was told the crown jewels were hidden in a biscuit tin 60 feet underneath Windsor Castle to keep them safe from the Nazis. The 91-year-old was speaking with royal commentator Alistair Bruce for a special one-hour program to mark the 65th anniversary of her coronation. He revealed that a librarian removed the stones out of the jewels and placed them into a bath oliver biscuit tin before hiding them in Berkshire. But the Queen seemed unimpressed by the news and simply said, HMM, did he remember where he put them? He might have died in the middle. Her reaction was noted by people watching the coronation on BBC One and one viewer said, you need better stories than jewels in a biscuit tin to impress the Queen. Twitter user Matt W added, Queen being told of the jewels being hidden in a biscuit tin during the war oh, did he tell anyone? What if he died? She is genuinely wonderful in the coronation. The gems, including the Black Prince's ruby from the Imperial State Crown, were placed in the tin and buried under a sally port, a secret exit used in an emergency. The Queen asked Mr. Bruce, You think they were at Windsor? He replied, They were definitely, ma'am. The librarian gouged the stones out of the crown jewels and wrapped them and put them into a drawer and put them into a bath oliver tin and hid them. Brilliant. But she seemed unimpressed and quickly said, HMM, did he remember where he put them? He might have died in the middle. The queen added, we were told nothing, we were only children then. We didn't know anything, all the pictures disappeared everything disappeared and one was never told anything. It was a secret, I suppose. Her Majesty who spent her war years at Windsor Castle for safety, was aware of the general story but did not know the details until told by Mr. Bruce. The story was unearthed for the documentary by Oliver Urquhart Irvine, 
the librarian and assistant keeper of the Queen's archives.